What is up YouTube? Value Hunter coming back with another unbox video or unbag video in this case. I got this in the mail today and you can kind of hear what's in here. Um, something's busted open inside and I'm not sure what it is, but we'll get right into it and find out what's here. So this package is from an auction in Tennessee that uh, I go to quite a bit. They're really good on shipping costs and uh, low buyer's premium. And they often have really good deals. Often a handful of items that don't get bid on. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll place bids, uh, you know, accordingly. Uh, in this case, there was, there was a couple of, uh, I, I know what's in here <laughs> that's making the noise. You can probably tell these are silver war nickels. Anyway, uh, there was a couple of rolls of there uh, in in the lots that uh, were not getting bid on. Uh, I think they started at 15 bucks. Maybe there was one other bid, and uh, for 17, I was able to pick up a roll, which you know books out melt value at about twice that. So anyway, one of them's apparently busted open. You can kind of see here. That's the one, right? It was war nickels. Um, all of this stuff from this auction, pretty cool. Um, a lot of loose coins that have busted out, but, uh, and, let's see what all we have here. So, one of the things I've been watching, uh, Blue Ridge Silverhounds channel recently, and uh, one of the things he was talking about is the 73, he did a, um, he did a, a video on the 1973 uh, Eisenhower and uh, the mint sets and um, the value here on these things. If you could pick them up for a few bucks, um, there's there's a there's a pretty good value. I'll put a link uh, to that particular video, but um, you know I got these for just a little bit over the face value and. Um, the mintage on these was a lower year. So there's a P and D set from 73. That was one item. Um, next up, we got this, which was a Turkey Silver Kurush uh, from 1909. And I just basically booked out what the melt value was on all their silver coins. They had hundreds of them listed. Most of them were a buck or two over spot and a few of them were at or below spot. So those are the ones I put a bid in on. Not that I have any particular desire to have a Turkish coin or anything like that, but uh, this is an older Turkish coin and it is silver. And so uh, I went ahead below melt and picked it up, added to the stack, especially with today's melt being lower. Same thing here, this one is uh, somewhat it's got some environmental issues there. Toning is kind of weird. There's a spot on it. There might be some stuff stuck to the coin, but uh, it's a 1960. It is silver. It's a 10 lira, also a Turkish, uh, also a Turkish coin. It's got a pretty cool, uh, you know, little design. You've got the uh, you know, sort of Turkish insignia, crescent, with the star, crescent moon with the star, and then some writing, some wreath. Looks like uh, a torch. A knife, some flags, an eagle's uh, wings in the background, uh, and it says 27 May 1960. So it might be a commemorative or something like that. I'll look into it a little bit further, but it was below melt when I looked it up on the NGC site. Uh, I picked up this 73. I find the 73 to be the rarer year on the Ikes, and so whenever I see them come up, I grab them. Uh, this one was a few bucks. Uh, maybe a dollar over spot, like five bucks. Uh, it does have an issue on uh, the head there. Something got into the packaging and it's toned up a little spot on the forehead. Um, but again, uh, you know, add to the stack and another 73. Uh, another Turkish, 1909, five Kurush, and it says it's AU. Uh, I got it for at or about spot price. So a coin like that in nice condition. Pretty neat addition. I got an 03S Barber Quarter, which I didn't have in my quarter book 
for barbers so this fills a hole for me and again I was able to get this for a few bucks so maybe a dollar or so over spot this is um, this is an O2 Sequoia's Cabin Oklahoma and it is 80 or 8 tenths of an ounce um, so this is some sort of commemorative from Oklahoma it's pretty cool silver uh, it's eight tenths of an ounce of uh, 999 I believe uh, I'll check it out it doesn't say on there there's no listing so it's a guess but um, you know this is pretty cool guys this uh, is an 1883 racketeer nickel so this thing is actually gold plated this is an 1883 it was the first year that they did the Liberty head nickels and as you can see on the, on the reverse, the word cents under the five was not on there. And so what was happening back in the day with these Liberty head nickels is they were taking them and dipping them or electro, you know, it was electroplate process, but they were, they were making them gold uh, plated basically. And then uh, using them as $5 gold. And, you know, for, for those uh, that were not familiar enough with uh, the five dollar gold gold piece it, it was similar enough that it would pass off for that in size and weight and everything and um, so they add as a result the mint added the word sense to the bottom below the V and below the wreath there and so if you see there's an 1883 with and without sense I've got one of each of those but I didn't have a racketeer so it was actually like five bucks for this and you know it's just a collectible item but it's pretty cool Next up is a couple of these. I had recently sold two of these, and so this was just kind of an inventory uh, re-up. I saw them both at auction. This is a brilliant uncirculated Washington 250th Commem. And there was another one in here that was a proof version of the same. 90% silver on both. First 90% silver coin. You can see previously somebody paid 15 bucks for this. Um, so if I picked it up for five, um, and replaced, you know, the one that I had sold for a little bit more than that. Uh, I felt like I was doing good. Some more of these. Uh, so we got a two and a half golden. This is a Dutch coin from 1929, and it is silver. Uh, the silver percentage, I don't recall, but I got it for a below spot. Again, I have one of these in my collection, but I'm adding to it. It's a heavier dollar size coin. And uh, I think we got 10 or $11 in spot price there. So, or in melt value there. So, uh, and then, uh, you know, some more additions that I was missing from the Barber uh, quarter collection that I've got going was an 1898S. Pretty cool. A few bucks. The 1902s didn't have that one either they had just a ton of these things listed and um so you know i have most of them so i didn't bid on the ones that i had i just bid on the ones that i didn't have and uh, my bids held up so uh, you know a few bucks for each of these but 1908 really they're not uh, for me you know even if they're a dollar or so over current spot price it's okay because you know they're going into a collection um and then this one pretty cool uh you can see somebody paid 50 57 dollars or at least that's what it was listed for if it was in a coin shop or whatever where this guy bought it this is a 1921 which is a semi or a key date or semi key date mercury dime did not have one of these either had a hole in my album where the 21 goes and so this i paid quite a bit for um you know i bid it up to 15 bucks and that's kind of where i was staying with it uh, i was looking on ebay they were all going for a lot more than that i ended up going up to 17 uh, to fill that gap uh, some of the way more expensive ones I probably won't ever get but on that one it was within reason so added it um, another one of these Belgian five francs guys I know you've seen these before this one was way below spot about half price below spot you've seen me open these on prior videos these five francs this one's from 1870 so a super old five franc in really nice shape I mean this thing is circulated but it is um 
you know, it's got a lot of good detail still for a coin that's, you know, 150 years old. I mean, amazing, really. And somebody had engraved their initials on it down here, which on a heavily circulated coin, still got all the details and everything. I don't know that that's that big of a deal, um, you know. So somebody put their initials on it, uh, you know, kind of like the hobo nickel. Sometimes it adds to the value, you know, or um, to the to the allure, the collectability of it. Um, you know, love tokens, things like that have that a lot of times. In this particular case, I bought it for the silver value because I got it below melt, not for numismatic. Uh, so I don't really care that it has that on there. I think it's actually kind of a, little, a cool little feature. But um, yeah, this is a Belgian five franc. Good amount of silver in this, and I got it well below the melt value. So nice big coin there, just like the golden. And then rounding out the silver purchases, um, there was this 50 cent Filipino from 44, this is a wartime silver. This is a US occupation. It's got that really cool peso design on the front, even though it's 50 cent Philippines. And then it says United States of America, 1944 on the back. So I have one or two of these really cool coins. Uh, and then these uh, at melt an 06. There, there was there was like 02, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And for some reason, the other ones got bid up to about 15 bucks. This is These are silver quarters. They have a current melt value around nine or 10 bucks for five of these, maybe even a little bit more. I'd have to look at Coinflation and check out their website and see what they say. $12.80. Uh, so there's 0.9 ounces of silver, troy ounces of silver, 0.9. So at today's melt, you've got $12.80. I was able to purchase this, I believe it was six bucks uh, for this one and also for the other. So about half of melt, pretty amazing deal. Um, got two of them here and these I probably resell uh, although they are pretty neat I, I do have uh, not in the holder I've got a set a full set of, of 06s but it came with a certificate of authenticity and the whole thing so um, and those sell pretty easily for you know the 15 to 20 range on eBay um, so we've got tons of these as you can see there was one that was a roll and then the other one was you know in a uh, a clear tube but you know two rolls of um, of the, uh, the wartime nickels and this was a 73 and I had sold a couple and this one looks like it's in decent shape this is a 73 brown box and the 73 again um, you know I I, uh, I put up a bit on these because I had sold a couple of them on eBay I, I had them listed just to see, you know, if I threw them out there for 15 or 20 bucks, if I get any interest. And um, almost immediately after I posted them up, I got a bid for full price uh, on both and sold them both. So I didn't have any more in my collection. And so I bought this one and one other uh, that you guys have seen me open, 73. So, um, you know, again, if I can get them for, you know, eight or nine or 10 bucks, uh, I'll post them up for 15 or 20 on eBay. And they sit in my collection unless somebody wants them at more than I paid. In that case, they can have them, and uh, I end up looking for more. So we've got these war nickels here, uh, and then you've got some more of these war nickels here. And these are 35% wartime nickels, and what happened during war, these are probably the least collectible uh, silver, I, I'd say, for the most part, as far as, uh, you know, constitutional stuff but you know during the wartime they needed steel and nickel and other items that were being used to create you know tanks and guns and ammo and wartime materials and so uh, they started making nickels out of 35% silver in order to conserve the other metals so you have this rare three-year period from halfway through 42 to the end of 45, they were making these nickels. And, um, you know, it's a good way to add. This one was kind of cool. I don't know if that is a mint error or not. It looks burnt, very peculiar. But look at the front of that, guys. I mean, what is that? It almost looks like a hobo nickel, like somebody started on. Um, it looks melted almost. It's kind of crazy, like it got so hot in that one area that the metal started to be affected. Anyway, that's pretty neat. And there are some rarities within this group, you know, within the sets. Um, so, 
Um, you know, typically these tubes hold $2 worth of nickels. Um, I have a feeling that what happened was I got a full tube of $2 and then a partial roll that did not have a full $2 in. So guys, you gotta make sure you learn how to count because I was thinking that maybe I got shorted here, but the truth of the matter is that there is m four more nickels here than uh, what I paid for. So they got two full rows plus four. I noticed this one right here is a 41. So um, I actually got some that are not silver, but you know, you get some older dates in there that you may not have uh, in your collection or you know, they can put in a year set or something like that. So I'm okay with that if I get a few that are, uh, that are not silver, but that are older. This is a 40, there's a 41. Uh, this is a 47. This one is silver, it's a 43. So I'll go through these um, so you can kind of see, you know, what all I picked up here. Nice little score, right? Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe and comment. Oh, I got one more thing I moved off to the side and probably the most exciting for me. Um, so this, you guys saw I was on a hunt for the, I was on an expedition on a previous video for the Lewis and Clark coin. Um, one of the things I got the Lewis and Clark coin, and if you look, it's just the coin in a holder, and that's kind of all it is. This one is how they were packaged and sold by the U.S. Mint. And what's crazy about these is in order to get the original mint packaging like this, uh, you got to pay an arm and a leg. On eBay, I'm seeing these things go for $50 to $100. Um, it has a nice little sleeve that goes on the outside. And then inside is this box, uh, which says Lewis and Clark on the front. I'm not sure you guys can make that out, but... Uh, and then it's got, you know, kind of some map type of look around the edge. And this is like a fake leather uh, feel to the cardboard that's on there. And then if you open it inside, what you'll see is there is the proof Lewis and Clark silver. So you've got your, your you know, $14 in melt value uh, Lewis and Clark commemorative silver dollar, 75 about 0.77 of a troy ounce of silver in these really cool coin very collectible within itself then on this side what you have is this pouch and this is what i was after interestingly enough certificate of authenticity proof silver but then this is a certificate of authenticity from nicole walking elk from 904 and she has signed it and she's part of the great Sioux Nation now known as Standing Rock in the place called South Dakota Nicole Walking Elk made this and what it is is it's the circle of tribal advisors tribal language revitalization cultural resources so this is all Native American and it's got a history about your pouch be very cool uh, this is this is a keeper for sure these are I mean how the government made these in mass and the fact that they're employing Native American you know uh, work to you know tying with the mint I think it's pretty cool just hope that they saw the value from that but you know uh, Native American stuff is super cool uh, in my book um, anyway I'll read into this um, and then it tells you a little bit about there's a holder for a certificate of authenticity which I will put back and then there's this so they don't want because of the tanning they don't necessarily want you to, to keep it in the same box that they send it to you in um, and I think that's kind of interesting but inside this box is a pouch and I think separating it out like this is fine but it's a pouch for the coin and this would be you know a pretty traditional Native American artifact that you would have seen you know from a couple hundred years uh, prior for 400 five, 400 years prior even um, you know with beads very soft the leather on this is extremely soft this pouch is very nice it's got a silver bead yeah, there you go uh, so the pouch is very nice you can see the bead work it would have been very similar to the end up in here um, you know handmade and then the pouch opens up here and you're able to place your coin in there. 
So this would have been like you would traditionally carry beads or other things for trade in, um, you know, possibly back in the day. And, um, you know, this item itself would be used for trade with the beadwork and everything for, you know, settlers or anybody else uh, that was, you know, trading with the local tribes people. So anyway, it's very cool. Um, it's, it, you know, a lot of the Native American industry today is based off of, you know, products like this that they make. And um, I just think it's a really cool homage to them, especially as a coin collector to have it mixed in. The premium on these things is crazy. I mean, these sets, you know, it's tough to put a price on an artifact like this. But, you know, when you take a look at, you know, just the silver value, um, you know, we're talking about... Um, you know, that coin being worth, I don't know, $14 of silver or something like that. Collectability, maybe a little more, 20 something like that. But, you know, these things are going for 50 to 100 bucks online. And so when I saw one um, that I was able to pick up for, you know, in the $25 range, uh, I jumped at the opportunity. I don't think it was all closed up. It wasn't all opened up like this in the picture. So sometimes these auctioneers don't take the type of pictures that they should. And what ends up happening is um, you get a great deal because of that, because you know other competitive bidders that don't know what they're looking at maybe missed out on it um, or don't know what to look up. You know, they're looking up just the coin and they don't realize that, you know, this is probably where more of the value is. Um, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this unbox. I sure did. Really cool collectibles, something outside of the norm here, um, you know, for sure with, you know, a tribal piece, uh, I would say that that is one of the, um, that was one of my favorite pieces in my coin collection. So outside of numismatic, uh, outside of stacking value for collectability, one of the coolest things. And certainly the most, you know, of m my modern collection it is my absolute favorite item. So glad to add this in and, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a pretty cheap date. I mean, pretty inexpensive way to make me happy. Uh, adding this particular piece to my collection. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, you know, and I just find these things so cool. Um, you know, guys, if you don't, if you're a collector and you don't own one of these, I, I just gotta say, you know, firsthand, sometimes it's tough to buy things that are, you know, uh, double the price of like melt value or something, especially on the modern. But you know, if you're a collector and you don't have one of these in your collection, um, I can just tell you, it's a really nice product. Um, I would highly recommend picking one up. Look for one that's, you know, going for a reasonable price on eBay or check out auctions and see what you can do. I mean, these are just absolutely phenomenal pieces and um, really, you know, rounding out make it, and like I said, you know, my favorite addition to my collection on modern coinage. So pretty cool stuff. Um, and uh, you know, the, the history here behind the racketeers that's called a racketeer nickel and all the other stuff this has just been a really cool unbox nice a history lesson here for us um be sure to like and subscribe and comment and until next time value hunter out